Hello everybody, JC here from Jason's Fed. How are you guys all doing? So today I'm really excited because we're going to be learning about the ExecV system call. And I believe you should also be excited too because we're going to be putting everything we're learning so far in context. The process ID, the parent process ID, the weight system call, the fork system call, everything will be put in context to a large extent by simply understanding how the ExecV system call works. So without further ado, let's just get started. Okay, guys, so right now I have a shell process running, which you can see right here. This shell process, which you're seeing right here, can actually execute programs, which you guys already know. So I could type in ls and then see what's happening. It's actually executing this ls program in my binary directory. So if I type in which ls, you realize that I have this program in my binary directory and I'm actually executing it on my shell process. I could type in my pwd for example it's going to give me the path to my present working directory and all these commands or all these programs have been executed on this shell process so um if we're actually creating our own shell program uh, it follows that we should have some way to sort of execute the commands which we will be imputing and that's where the concept of the exec v system call comes so if you come over here to the man pages check this out guys so it says exec v what it does is that it helps us execute programs so if you check this out you'll be able to see the syntax of the exec v system call right here and um you can also see that the exec v system call accepts three arguments the first of them being the file name which you see right here the second is the arguments which you see right here or an array of argument strings passed to the new program and you don't have to worry if you don't understand this right now we're going to be explaining it in code the third of them is the environment variable okay so the first of them is the file name the file name has to do with the path to the file which you actually want to execute or the program which you actually want to execute so i'm going to try to break this down by writing a simple code right now okay so say i want to actually write the program that prints out the list of um, files and directories in my present working directory to achieve that in my shell program i'll just type in simply l s hyphen l and this actually gives me my desired output let's say i want to achieve this using my exec v system call i'm going to open up this file exec.c and for starters you want to make sure that you include this header file right here because in this unique standard h that's where the executive system call is actually defined so i'm going to go over right here to my program and i'm going to include it right now so that's it right here unistd.h the next thing i would need to do is to find a way to somehow uh get this my argument variables right here this is my file name argv and for now we're not going to be concerning ourselves with this envp for now so we're just going to be using this and this right here to achieve this particular task all right so now how do we get the file name um if you come right here to your documentation you will see here right here where it says agv is actually an array of argument strings passed to the new program and then it says by convention check this out the first of these strings which strings are we talking about the agv strings because you already learned that the agv is actually an argument an array of argument strings so the first of these argument strings should contain what the file name associated with the file being executed so um if i have my strings my agv strings the first of them should contain the the file name associated with the file being executed so to do that i'm just going to create um char variable a pointer an array of strings and um the first of them would contain the path to the file which i actually want to execute which is ls so it's in the binary directory so that's why i actually put it like this the next thing i'm going to write is that i'm going to write the argument okay so it's actually to print it in long format i need to add this hyphen l so that would be the second um string or the second element of this array will be this hyphen l and then how do we know that we have actually reached the end of this string is by adding a null um pointer right here and then if you come right here to our documentation it says that both argv and this guy right here this envp must this is the punchline must 
be terminated with a null pointer all right so that's exactly what i did right now so by simply writing this i've been able to define my argv and also by extension i've been able to also define my file name because we also learned that the, the file name is actually gotten from what the very first element of this argv array so everything looks good next let me just go ahead and call the exec this system call and um, we already talked about the arguments. The first of them is the file name. And to get the file name, I'm going to use the array square bracket notation to access this string right here. Because by convention, the first of this string should contain the file name, which we actually specify right here. So I'm just going to do argv square bracket zero. Because that's the first element of this array. The second element, I'm just going to pass in argv because that contains all the arguments that we have passed over to this command. Thirdly, because um, to achieve this, I told you guys that we won't be using this um, ENVP, the environment variable. So I'm just going to give it a null pointer. So everything looks good for now. But before I run this, I just want you guys to know that the exec v system call could actually fail. Yeah. And uh, we can be able to know this by observing the return value. So if I come right here to my man page and I check the return value, it tells us that on success, exec v doesn't return. And we're going to talk about this in detail later but for now it says that on error negative one is returned so in order for us to check the right hand code i'm just going to create a variable right here val an integer variable to help us check what is the return value of the exec v system call and i'm going to say if if val is equals negative one um i want to just um print out um error just like that error and then next um, i'm going to do a print f done with exec v i really know if you guys can see where we are headed but for now let me just save this and run this and see what we have so let me do a simple gcc to compile this and run it all right guys so check this out you realize that I have my files and my directories being printed out right here in long format without me having to type directly ls in my shell process. Another thing to take note of is that I had a statement inside my file, inside my source code that um, said done with exec v. But if you realize that when this exec v system call actually succeeded, this statement didn't get executed. And that's happening because on success, exec v does not return um so let's press into this information a little bit further let me show you something right here in our man pages and you're gonna like it okay so right here it gives us more information about what happens when exec v succeeds so it says first things first that it doesn't return on success we already knew this but check this out guys it says that the text the data, the BSS, and the stack of the calling process are actually, are actually overwritten by the program loaded. Okay, so in our case right here, the program loaded happens to be this LS program. And our calling process, on the other hand, happens to be this exec program, which you see right here. So when we actually you know, executed this program, we created the process. And that process was the process that actually called the exec v system call. Now, when the exec v system call succeeded, what happened was that the memory of the initial program, the exec program, was actually overwritten by this new program, LS. And um, if you overwrite something, you lose every information which you previously had. And that's why um, this done with exec v right here, this statement never really got executed because the exec v system call loaded this ls into the memory and overrode the previous program the exec program and this print f was actually part of the exec program and it got overwritten in the process um, this actually has some implication uh, when it comes to us building our own shell but for now let's just concern ourselves with writing a code such that we can be able to call this exec v system call and actually print out the list of files and directories in our you know on our terminal and at the same time still 
um execute this the statements that succeed or that follow the exec v system call so i know right now a lot of us are already having ideas on how to actually achieve this and just in case this still seems a little bit vague for you or no, i want us to play a little game before i go on so go ahead if you can and pause this video and think of a way to actually achieve this and then when you're done um play the video and compare it with what i'm gonna do and um, let me see your comments in the comment section below if you're actually thinking that like or you have something different okay so i'm anticipating your comments in the comment section so for the moment of truth um uh, how am i gonna achieve this i hope you guys played the game with me well if you didn't it's all good too um the whole idea is that you're learning what's happening um i'm gonna be achieving this using a combination of the frog system call and the weight system call so how would this work I'm going to create a child process and the child process will call exec v okay so if exec v succeeds in the child process obviously it wouldn't return so the child process will be off the memory and my parent process will be the one left and every other code that succeeds the exec v system call will be executed by the parent process until the last return statement from our main function so i hope that makes sense um if it doesn't um, just watch me code and I believe it's, it's going to make so much more sense. So for starters, you want to make sure you include the right header files just like that. Next, I'm going to create the variable right here to help me hold my process ID. Um, I think everything looks good for now. I'm going to come here and create my child process. So I'm supposed to work just like that. The next thing I'm going to check just in case my first system call fails. So PID is equals to negative one. Um, let me just do a simple return one or negative one just to keep it simple. Next, I'm gonna check if I'm in the child process. Okay, so how do we know if you're in the child process if PID is equal to zero, isn't it? Next, um, like I said, I'm gonna be calling the exec view from the child process. Okay, so I'm just going to save, push this a little bit further, just so that it's all within this if block. Um, since we're writing C, I need to put some curly braces. So I miss Python without curly braces. Anyways, it's all good. Um, next, I would need to push this. I think everything looks good for now. I'm going to run an else statement right here. I'm going to do else. So else would imply we're in the parents. I will do a wait right here. No, so just in case the parent is executing, it's going to wait for the child to be done with executing and then it will return back to the parents. So uh, I think this looks good. Okay, so let me just go over this one more time. So what we're expecting is that um, when I create this child process, if we are the child process right here, when PL is equal to zero, and exec v succeeds, the child process will be overwritten in the memory and um, the, the parent process obviously will still be running. So we'll be able to return back to the parent process once this guy is off the memory, isn't it? And then the parent process will continue right here from this wait statement and print out done with exec v. So um, with this setup, with this code right here, we are able to first things first, achieve the execution of this ls command right here in the child process and continue with the rest of the code from the parent process so i told you that we will be putting um, everything in context by understanding the exec v system call to a large extent so let me just save this and run this to make sure that we are accurate in sec bullseye check this out guys so i have right here um, the list of files and directories in long format. I also have done with exec v printed out right here So guys, that's it for the exec v system call. I hope you guys enjoy this um, If you still have any part of this video that is confusing go ahead and watch it again and compare it with other resources You can have you know online, you know as as much as I love you guys watch my video You shouldn't constrain yourself to just one video So go ahead and use other resources and compare and contrast and I believe it's going to make so much more sense Because in our next video, we're going to be building from this concept to understand The get line function because up till now We've not been able to receive commands from our standard inputs or our keyboard So usually if you have a shell 
um program like which you have right here running a shell process running you should have some way to sort of receive the commands from your keyboard instead of just hard coding them so that's what we're going to be learning in our next video to help put everything in context so i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did give it a like share it with a friend you know drop a comment if you have something that you also want to say that maybe you felt i did not touch go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and that's it from me for now i'll see you in the next one